Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, we'll try once again to nab an asteroid and bring it into orbit around Kerbin. A Class D asteroid, so it's a little bit hard. It's 600 tons, so it's not been an easy thing. But hopefully our new mission that we're sending out there will do the trick. We'll see. But it's set out there and should encounter it within a day. However, we also need to pay attention to this Science Junior Standard, which is uh, returning from Ninmus. It's due back in uh, Kerbin in one day and 15 hours, so we can't miss that, otherwise it won't survive. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting though. The Science Junior Standard says on escape trajectory out of Kerbin when it's clearly not. It's, uh, it's got an orbit and it's going to actually definitively return to Kerbin. It'll descend through the atmosphere. However, the 84 is already in Kerbin, that's fine. But the 83, which is the actual asteroid, our mission that we sent there was called 83. And it is clearly on an escape trajectory out of Kerbin. See, Kerbin escape. However, this one is orbiting Kerbin. So I don't know, these, these, some, this probably needs to be fixed somehow. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to fix that, right? I mean, as long as an orbit has an escape, it's, it's, it's on escape a trajectory out of Kerbin. This one has no escape, see? No escape. Should not say on escape trajectory out of Kerbin. This one has an escape. There it is. And so it should not say orbiting Kerbin. Okay, just a little bit of pickiness. But the mission we're interested in right now is this one, and it will intercept the asteroid right there. Let's see how we do. And here's our stalwart mission, and I hope that we've got enough juice in it to do some serious pushing on this asteroid. That's the key, right? Do we have enough fuel to push it around? Uh, we're not going to have more than like 50, 50 meters per second, and my hope is that that's enough. Yep, so here it is. Something between 20 kilometers and 40 kilometers on our encounter. One day, five hours. I think I said one day, 15 on the on the Science Junior Standard. Let's keep a close eye on where it is as we do this. So, there's really nothing we can do. Okay, 40. So it's uh, on the bad end of the estimate range. Oh, well. Yeah, I think that Science Junior is a pretty good distance away from from anything important. Oh, there's two intersect points. That's interesting. I wonder how the geometry works on that. Difference to target, 215.8 meters per second, not bad at all. Let's see how this is affecting things here. It's doing well, uh, sort of. I think we should hold off on it for a little bit. Looks like our actual encounter will be out here somewhere, so 10 more minutes. You can see our orbits coming into alignment. So unfortunately, we no longer seem to be... Well, let's try and fix this. No longer seem to have an intercept, that's all. It's doing that in the wrong direction, actually.
problem is that we now have escape trajectories on both of them and so it doesn't want to calculate when I'm actually intercepting it. Well, let's see. Where is it? Oh, we seem to be going closer. Good sign. Let's orient retrograde just to be careful. Have I mentioned that this is a big asteroid? Look at that. Now the question is whether I should decouple my existing mission from the asteroid before trying to dock this one. And I guess the that could be answered by, let's say we arm this. Can we target the center of mass like we did before? Does it treat that like an asteroid or does it treat it like a AD3, the vessel? I think it might treat it like AD3 and that might be a problem. Oh no, it, it can uh, target the center mass. Okay, so it can do this independently. Maybe. Well, I'm gonna assume it's right. Okay, so I, I think I'm, this little target reticle is the center mass. I'm going to slow down a bit. As usual, I can no longer see my distance to the object object there's our other mission In retrospect, maybe we should have left docking ports on part of it. Just for the manned missions, so that uh, they have a place to park themselves. Instead of also grappling the object. I don't know, this doesn't seem like the center of mass, does it? Well, what can I do? It's saying that this is the place. Oh, well, I've got it. It is sort of... I don't know. This is probably going to work out badly. We'll have to do it very slowly. Well, I'm getting used to this whole grappling things thing. Now, it's not really letting me add a maneuver anywhere on here. Well that's not actually a problem because I know exactly the direction we need to go in. It's called retrograde. So I'm going to turn on RCS. Gonna slowly try and maneuver this asteroid retrograde. Oh uh, the RCS on the other thing is also... Oh, this could be complicated. Oh, and actually the jets on the... So we're all one big happy ship now, and this one... Let's shut down its engines. This That could make things complicated. It could also stabilize things, but let's, let's not rely on that possibility. No. 
Okay, well, the asteroid seems to want to go in the opposite direction from where I want it to go. This is not helpful. I'm not particularly concerned how close in orbit we get, as long as it's not inside Kerman's atmosphere and we're not going to get it there. So, we can just burn out this Poodle engine. Looks like it's working out better than the previous one. But we're burning a lot more propellant to keep things stable. Let's go to half power then. I think we're learning some valuable information about asteroid manipulation here. Perhaps one key is to have multiple probes and have RCS on at multiple locations. Not there yet. Is it at least getting better? Very, very slowly. Uh, if your escape uh, increases, then you are doing it technically. Okay, this seems to be more thrust than my reaction control can take care of. Since we're past periapsis, it's not quite as efficient. Uh, it's got to take more juice to get into orbit than it would have before. Okay, opening up the taps looks like it's uh, it's not a problem right now. Our mod propellant is depleting more because the mod propellant on the new probe is feeding into the RCS ports on the old one. So that's why we're losing a lot more of that. How are we? It's really not helping. Surface. We... that's not right at all, is it? Okay, maybe we shouldn't be trusting our orbits either. I wish I could uh, create a maneuver node, though. Does this make sense as uh, the way the orbit is? Yeah, we, we, we are going north, basically, so this is pointing south. That's right. Just doing a sanity check here. Well, once we run out of mod propellant, we're going to have to rely on the reaction wheels. That's going to be fun. Maybe we can sort of spin stabilize this thing. Sort of a vain hope, but it's at least something at least. Wow. Sure doesn't seem like we're making much headway. How fast is Minmus's orbit around Kerbin? 274. So we're already slower than that, though we're probably further out than that too. Okay, the Poodle engine is gonna go. That's unfortunate because it's got much better thrust. Uh, well. Uh, okay. Is this really doing anything? Yeah, it is. Just very, very slowly.
I wonder if asteroids allow fuel cross feed. I mean, uh, the fuel in here, does it feed into these? No, I mean, through the clamp? I don't know. I mean, not, not this stage, obviously, but the stage closest to the clamp, the one without a decoupler in the way. I don't know whether the asteroid itself will allow fuel crossfeed. That'd be interesting to find out. I doubt it. I hope not. That would not make any sense. But it wouldn't be the weirdest glitch to ever occur in Kerbal Space Program. Let me just see what the effect of adding one of these rockets is on the thrust port. Let's say we do enable... Will that sort of help turn things properly? Seems like it's doing a pretty good job actually. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna burn out these stages. That's all I can think of doing. So... I'm gonna probably stop recording and because it's gonna be a long and tedious thing and I'll rejoin you once it looks like I've got things close to being done here I just really realized something I wasn't controlling from the advanced grabbing unit this means that we're actually very far away from the retrograde marker. We haven't been burning correctly at all. So we've actually been burning, as you can see, slightly off. So I'm just going to turn towards it and see if we can do better. But we've already burned a lot of fuel aiming at the wrong place. That's sort of unfortunate. At least I think it's the wrong place. I assume controlling from the advanced grappling unit is correct. Though why it should have such a big difference between... I, I guess when we attached, we started controlling from this one instead of this one. I don't know. I mean, it really should have been uh, controlling from the probe core, which is inside the RCS tanks, the monopropellant tanks. And because I didn't control from the advanced grappling unit when targeting the asteroid center of mass, we are actually quite far away from the asteroid center of mass with this particular... So that's why we were having so much trouble keeping things stabilized I guess okay well this is good enough and I guess I'll add rocket there to keep things stabilized hopefully this is right I, I really have no idea Especially since it doesn't seem to be really helping too much in terms of how much our orbit is slowing down. Actually, before it seemed to be doing better. But we're actually quite far off from our mark right now. We've got an orbit! Hey, look at that! Well, we better be a, a little bit conservative about this, because just because it says it's in orbit doesn't mean it's suddenly going to not suddenly going to fling off into interplanetary space here. You know how uh, KSP and orbits are. So let's bring in as tightly as possible. But it looks like we've got a success, folks. It looks like we we've got it. Finally, wow. Very highly inclined orbit, obviously. But uh, any orbit will do at this point. We can send further missions to this Class D asteroid. And at some point it might not be just an asteroid. It might be a space station. That is in our future. And a huge 600 ton space station.
Well, one thing's for sure, if you got a 600 ton space station, whatever you dock to it is going to be the thing that's wiggling. Uh, the space station is not going to wiggle. So there's Kerbin, the new parent of this particular rock. Why this reglo there? Strange. Okay, the main rocket is gone. Let's do this. Might as well go to full power since. Frankly, we don't have much power to begin with. So no, it doesn't look like we have fuel crossfeed in the asteroid, thankfully. Though... I wouldn't be surprised if not the advanced grabbing unit, the tanks, the tanks. We can transfer fuel through the asteroid though. That's funny. Funny but helpful. Okay, I've done some fuel transferring to facilitate just Finishing off the fuel, I'm just using this one little rocket on this this particular one. Looks like the reaction wheels are doing a pretty good job keeping things stabilized at, at this point. So maybe I should favor reaction wheels over RCS because, you know, we're pointing in the same direction here. And RCS was not actually helping us do that very well. So our resulting orbit is going to be around 26,000 kilometers by 76,000 kilometers. Not easy to get to, but uh, but a definite improvement on the prior situation. Okay, that's the end of the fuel in these little guys. We'll keep them on as uh, lighting for this asteroid, just in case we need that. And we need to turn to our mission from Minmus now, which is bringing back much needed science. So, this is, has been a rousing success, but I must make sure that my Minmus mission doesn't suffer the same fate as that moon mission, which uh, lost Science Junior on landing thanks to the fact that I kept time warp at 4x. So let's switch to it. Of course, because this mission is returning with uh, from Minmus, it's got a lot more fuel left over. Hmm. We could think about what to do about that, but not right now, maybe. Let's get this closer in and see which side we're landing on. What I decide to do about it will probably depend on whether we're landing in on the bright side or the dark side, and also whether we're landing on land or water. Okay, let's get this going retrograde here. No, that's prograde, come on. It's bright so far, but we're going on to the dark side here. Okay, let's retract the solar panels. No point having those explode on us. What's the mass of this? 1.85 tons. I don't know, maybe that parachute can... Well, well, we'll assume the parachute can handle it and we can decouple if necessary. Oh dear, mountains. That's not a good thing. Mountains are not conducive to the survival of science juniors.
Mm, well, we're in, on, on safer ground, I think. Not not necessarily perfectly safe, but still better than what we were ha had before. Let's get the gear out. It'll protect the Science Junior a bit. And, you know, the, the, this whole stage will probably protect the Science Junior a bit, too. We seem to be hitting those mountains now. Uh, let's retrofire, actually. Let's try not hitting these guys, at least. Let's... Oh, there's no point doing this. Let's just... Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. I just wanted to pop the parachutes. Oh, well. Here we go. This might be rough. We'll see. Okay, parachutes open. Not too high. We're talking about a little over a kilometer high. But what kind of terrain have we got? Let's not time warp too much. Not time up too much. Bit of a slope. <sighs> really? Six point eight meters per second. Science Junior can't deal with that? What's up with that? This is this has been very disappointing. This this series of missions, as in terms of the results, I'm I'm quite depressed. Uh, yeah. Well, definitely not the best designed mission. Uh, I mean, we got the work done. We just couldn't bring it back. Should have even transmitted the results. Would have been better. Well, let's recover the vessel and get the thermometer reading at least. Hopefully. Yeah, we got the temperature scan from Minmus's lowlands, and even points for a vessel returned from the surface of Minmus. Let's go to the Research and Development Center to see what we can buy with substantially less points than we thought we were going to earn. Well, some of the more interesting stuff is obviously out of reach for us with only 252 science, these 300 science bits, especially the, the science, the seismometer would be good. But, but we've got other possibilities. Not too sure about building aircraft yet. Well, I mean, I didn't do it in my last series, so maybe I should do it this series. We are sort of, I sort of have that pattern. And in fact, if I buy this and this, that adds up to the points we've got. Specialized construction seems a bit too specialized for now. We could try big things. Big things are a possibility. Or we could try... Well, we'll need the small gear bay in order to do anything with planes. What kind of plane parts do we already have? Oh... Not the most useful stuff. I'm specifically looking for the Delta Wing, after all. Oh, so Delta Wing's there. But we'd need Delta Wing... And... And the landing gear, at least. So we wouldn't be able to do without both of them. If we were going to make planes, that is. And I'm not entirely sure I can see the point if we're aiming for asteroids. Okay. Well, I've shown that I can rendezvous with an asteroid and capture a fairly large one with a... Uh, with a uh, skipper. And just using the skippers. So, I don't feel too bad about unlocking the main sails and these new LFBs. I guess we'll see what they're good for. Yep, let's skip that. And I guess the most critical one would be, let's get the landing gear. And see what we've got here. Oh, those th th these landing struts are really helpful, so we can look forward to that. Okay, so... 
look look for bigger rockets next time as we now have our main sails and these 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 things so uh, i think uh, next time we'll have some rocket building to do in preparation for the arrival of the ihy 504 actually let's see how far away it is before we leave ihy 504 class d asteroid will be coming in Really momentarily, 15 hours we've got. Still no periapsis being read here. So we are looking at it very carefully. That's the next one in. So perhaps these new parts will help us to make sure that it does not crash into Kerbin. And it's not a small thing. It's about 600 tons. So, so we've got to be worried about it. All right. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.